We're driving a 2022 Subaru Forester Wilderness. That's the off-roady one. Coming up, I'm gonna tell you a fact where you're gonna say, Micah, you're a dirty liar. But first, information explosion. Subaru calls the Forester a compact SUV. To my eyes, it looks like a very tall wagon, but whatever you call it, it's Subaru's best selling vehicle. And the wilderness trim that we're driving here is the most off-road capable version of it. Let us begin with interior. Lady, any thoughts about the interior? Everything is very easy to use, even if you're not looking at it. The materials are nice. They have tried to add a little bit of style yeah, with, with the texture and stuff. Yeah. yeah. And this being the wilderness too, we'll talk about it, but you probably notice some gold trim here and here that kind of elevate the style quotient. But yeah, I think the main theme here is practicality. Uh, and from that perspective, what about interior space? My goodness. So roomy, no matter what anyone else in the car is doing. Me seated behind myself, there's so much knee room. Um, I could have a much taller person in front and still have plenty of space. Headroom is great, though I will note that this moonroof here, it actually takes out a fairly large amount of um, interior volume. So uh, headroom in the back is worse with the, the moonroof. And there's still good headroom. I really like that the rear seat seats are adjustable. You can adjust the seat back angle, though I should note that that's, that feature does not come on the base trim. What about getting kiddo in and out and getting car seat installed? For an SUV, this rides reasonably low. Mm -hmm. And so step in height was great for her. Getting the car seat installed was very easy. There are latch flaps, which make it very easy to access the latch points, but covers over them if that's not something you need. The doors open wide enough for me to get the car seat in. It's kind of a, a tall opening. I thought it was very easy to access. Yeah, and easy to reach over her and get her um, seat belt buckled. I'm gonna sneeze. <laughs> Sensi, you didn't need to censor that. that <laughs> just a sneeze. Another thing I like about the interior on the wilderness is these water repellent seats. Cause uh, if you live an active lifestyle, it might get wet. Out back, 26.9 cubic feet of space, which is really quite good. I don't know what they're expecting us to need to lash down back there, but whatever it is, there is a hook somewhere adjacent on the bottoms, on the sides. There are a couple from the top, uh, everywhere. You got the little um, cargo cover, which is pretty easily removable. I like the releases in the back, very easy to use. So easy, a child could use it uh, for flipping down the seats. I think it's just a very functional space back there. Agreed. From a safety perspective, this is five star rated overall from the NHTSA. Uh, it includes the eyesight suite of active driver assist, like lane keeping assist and automatic emergency braking. That is a standard feature. And seven airbags, including a driver's knee airbag. What do we think? Is this thing family friendly? Family yeah. friendly. Yeah, very family friendly. Rear window test. Not all the way down. Armrest test. Okay. I like the inboard, fairly squishy. Uh, even though with the, uh, you got the stitching on the side here, uh, I don't find it impedes my comfort. But the outboard is too far out for me to rest my elbow on it while also keeping my hand on the steering wheel. And I do find like on this outboard position, it's a little bit grippy uh, for my elbow skin. And you know I've got very sensitive elbows. I'm gonna go 75% on the inboard, 35% on the outboard. Hey, have you subscribed to our channel? If you haven't, please do. At 100,000 subs, we're gonna review a windowless white van. Style! <laughs> Let me very quickly thank the sponsor for today's video, Flying Eyes Sunglasses. They are not like normal sunglasses. They're made out of this stuff called resilamide, and it's incredibly durable, bendy. You can do things like that. These are the Kestrels. They're like the aviator style frames that I wear in the uh, helicopter. This is my newest pair, silver with a green G15 tint like they use for military eyewear. Uh, and Sweetie's wearing the ophthalmic line. These have removable uh, magnetic tinted lenses so that I can easily transition from wearing them while I read or work on the computer to going outside once in a while. Not only does uh, Evie have the lightweight durability of flying ice frames, but uh, she's got her prescription right in there so she can see things, like me waving at her. Hey, over there. <laughs> what? 
If you are ready to invest in aviation grade eyewear, click the link in the description below. Use the promo code MICA for 10% off. And now onward to style. When we drove the Outback Wilderness, I noted that it looked like the uh, concept of an active lifestyle made into a car. And we have similar vibes here. Uh, I'll also mention that the Wilderness trim adds some style uh, that you don't have on a standard Forester. So you've got the Geolander tires, which are a little bit more off-road focused. You got a half inch increase in ride height up to 9.2 inches of ground clearance. So it sits up a little bit higher. You got this uh, dark thing, which I think is meant to uh, impede glare, but really it's just sort of a stylized element of front there you've got the gold accents um, and then this is geyser blue paint the one thing i love about um, subaru is that they do not upcharge you for this paint um, a lot of manufacturers uh, really nickel and dime you where it comes to uh, paint choices and i like that subaru is not doing that it's also worth mentioning that for 2022 they updated the front fascia and grill so all the foresters look a little bit fresher up front and then uh the roof rails are reinforced they're stronger and so they've got a 220 pound dynamic load but an 800 pound static load sweetie do you know why there'd be those two different loads and why that matters to me it sounds like you have something alive or not alive up there yeah so you have a giant octopus and uh this <laughs> so that's is, only 200 pounds yeah only 200 pounds if it's dead, then you can have 800 pounds of oxygen. No, it's a rooftop tent situation. So you've got an empty rooftop tent on the roof, uh, and when you're driving, that can be up to 220 pounds. But when you're not driving, you can have 800 pounds on there, and you'll be fine. That will be the concept. Oh, okay. That's less fun. But... Or the octopus thing. I mean, you know, do as you please. We're not here to judge. What do you guys think of the style of the Subaru Forester? It does kind of have a statement vibe to it. Is the statement, look at my fog lights. <laughs> it might be look at my fog lights. <laughs> There's just so much plastic around it and it's swooping and... It's just like makeup. You're drawing attention to your best features. Totally. What do you guys think of the Subaru Forester? You like it? You dislike it? Tell us in the comments. If you're curious what we're doing between YouTube videos, you can give us a follow over on Instagram. I'm Cars and Helicopters. She's Humans and Cats. In motion! Driving around the Subaru Forester through our little mountain town, uh, I think the ride quality is quite comfortable and the handling is, is predictable. One thing that this has in common with the Subaru Outback is a fairly quick steering ratio, 13.5 to one, so when you um, add a little input, it doesn't take too, too much steering to get the direction change, but it doesn't feel darty. I think they've like done a really good job of finding a balanced uh, combination of ride and handling. The big question everybody has is the CVT and power. So for the Forester, there's one engine choice, it's naturally aspirated, and it makes okay horsepower. I am going to do one little quick test here. So car reviewers always floor the CVT and then complain that it makes loud noises. I'm going to leave it a modest pace. I'm going to set my foot halfway down on the accelerator and see what happens. Here we go. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. It, it's funny because I'm not moving my foot at all and the rate of acceleration changes quite a bit. Ooh. That is one of my complaints about Subaru's CVT approach is that it's not consistent pull. But like having to appear in YouTube videos, eventually you will get used to it. <laughs> Love you, sweetie. I will. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say it's like my favorite way to accelerate, but the acceleration itself is adequate. Your favorite way to accelerate is by unicorn, right? <laughs> by unicorn and straight up. <laughs> We're coming to a stop. Hey, hey guys, let's cool it down for a second here. We're just gonna take it down a notch. And by taking it down a notch, I mean, let's have Evie drive. Sweetie's at the wheel. I have a suspicion of how this is gonna go. How's visibility in the Forester? The visibility out the front is outstanding. The Forester is known for exceptional visibility because it has these massive side windows. And as you look around, I mean, I'm guessing you have a fairly unimpeded, the, the quarter windows in the back are huge. They're it, so big. Do we have like a new best for visibility, sweetie style? Perhaps we do. Perhaps we do. The vehicle's dynamics, do they support that sense of confidence? At the speeds I drive, it feels stable. I like the way it turns. I feel like I don't have to put a lot of effort in to get the amount of turn I need, which is awesome because all roads turn up here. Mm -hmm. And then do you feel like there's enough power for your needs? Yes. Yes. <laughs> all right, we've reached a level of satisfaction. I think I can get back in the driver's seat. 
So Sweetie had a pretty good drive. Uh, one thing we need to do though, because this is the off-road version, we should go off-road. Let's do that now. All right, we're, uh, we got tires on dirt. Oh, and this is a good test. Anytime you can get uh, two wheels light, then you get to see how well the vehicle puts power to the ground. I'm gonna put us in X mode uh, and go deep snow and mud and see if it can transfer power from the tires that are slipping to the tires with grip. Let's do it. Yep, nice. So it transfers that power by applying brakes to the wheels that are slipping, and it did a good job of getting that power to the ground. Cool. And also, I think in terms of ride quality, I think the Forester's suspension tuning works well in this context. Not too blubby <laughs> and not too firm. I wouldn't take this over hugely challenging terrain, but for semi-challenging terrain like we've got here, I think this is a pretty great platform. Oh, oh, and they've revised the final drive ratio for the CVT, so you're able to get power a little bit easier at uh, low revs. Oh, we're there, balancing on three, Ooh. two wheels there. Getting power to the ground, and you got that prompt acceleration from that uh, lower final drive ratio. Yeah, I think this is, uh, certainly the most capable Forester and could get you a lot of places to go have a good time. All right, back to the road. So I think overall we have a pretty well-rounded, nice driving vehicle. I think we're all pretty satisfied. Are we satisfied? Satisfied. Yay, satisfied. Let me very quickly thank the folks on Patreon who support us. We like chatting with you guys there. You guys get early access to our videos. Thank you, patrons. Emotion Factor. Thoughts on the Emotion Factor? It is the emotion of your needs being met and being able to go on adventures. Yeah, I think there's uh, something about the potential implied by the shape. It's like, eh, those people are probably going like rock climbing or camping or something like that. Fooled you! Fooled you, we're just driving around making videos. I also think the um, potential emotion factor of a forester is amplified in wilderness form. The extra body cladding certainly says rough and tumble outdoor lifestyle. Though I will note that when we had the Outback Wilderness, the uh, body cladding actually is inclined to scratch. We hit some uh, brush and uh, it didn't feel great about scratching it, but uh, it did seem to scratch fairly easily. So uh, be cautious with your body cladding. But I think overall, there certainly is uh, an emotion factor and the visual are more evocative in wilderness form. If you're feeling emotionally drawn to buy a Forester of your very own, click the Kelly Blue Book listing link in the description below for real vehicles in your area. Remarks! Remark number one, info so we've got the um, optional eight inch screen, but the standard screen is 6.5 inches. And what all of those numbers tell you is that the Forester is about due for uh, an overhaul. Smaller screen sizes by modern standards. But I think the eight inch unit works pretty well. Thoughts? I really like the combination of physical buttons. The icons are huge. They're different colors. It's really easy to operate while you're driving. I also like the fact that uh, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are both included standard. And uh, I like the fact that there's a CD player and an aux in. So we've got the, uh, the double header of antiquated technologies that the YouTube comments will now tell me are absolutely essential. So if you have a CD um, fetish or an aux in need, both of those are met with the Forester. This has the optional 180 degree nose cam, which is a helpful feature, especially when you're off-roading. But it's funny because it's um, on this tiny screen up top here. Which is like tauntingly far away. Like it could not be farther away and still be inside the vehicle. I imagine that's what it's like when um, you use your eyes without um, your glasses. I think I see something there. What is that? <laughs> it's more useful than not having a camera, but I do totally. wish it was a larger screen and a little higher res. One advantage to driving the wilderness that we're driving is that it can tow 3,000 pounds. Every other trim tops out at 1,500. So if you want to tow with your Forester, get yourself a wilderness. Something that really jumped out to me about the Forester is the fuel economy drop with the wilderness trim. It's a pretty substantial drop, especially that highway number. That's what happens when you um, raise a vehicle up and you uh, put it on grippier tires uh, that are made for off-road purposes, and then you change the uh, final drive ratio. All of those things are working against fuel economy and you really feel it there. At the beginning of the video, I teased that I was gonna tell you a fact about the Forester where you're gonna call me a Dirty liar. The interior volume of the Subaru Forester is essentially identical to the Subaru Outback. Liar! No. <laughs> dirty liar. 
you would think that the Outback should be the more voluminous choice. Yes. I think what we have here is a very tall roof. And I think that oh. tall roof helps account for that volume equivalence. If you just need like maximum volume for the lowest price, Forrester's a pretty great option. Now there are some reasons why you would go with the Outback. It's clearly a uh, more feature rich vehicle, larger screens. And also you do have the availability of a 2.4 liter turbocharged engine. Is it also paired with the laggy CVT? Sweetie's learning. Sweetie's slowly <laughs> becoming a car reviewer. No. <laughs> Sweetie, can I give you a trim recommendation? Please do. By the way, the trim recommendation is what will give you the absolute essentials you need in a vehicle at the lowest possible price. For me, I would move up from the base trim to the premium trim. Here's what that premium trim adds. A 10-way power driver's seat, heated front seats, smart key access, a moonroof, X mode, bigger front brakes, alloy wheels, roof rails, auto up and down front windows, six speaker audio, a rear armrest, and reclining rear seat backs, all for $3,000 over the base price. Yes, $3,000 is a fairly large bump in price, but man, you get a lot of stuff for it. And I don't know if I want one that doesn't have those reclining rear seats and keyless access and roof rails. Get yourself the premium. As for the competitive set, uh, there are names like, uh, let's see, Honda CRV, Nissan Rogue, Toyota RAV4. Um, another one that I think is really interesting that we are looking forward to driving is the Mazda CX-50. Oh, and then we have previously reviewed the Ford Bronco Sport. You can click up here if you want to check that out. That might also compete in a similar space, rugged lifestyle kind of thing. Did we miss any remarks? If so, tell us in the comment section. Synopsis! In thinking about the essence of the Subaru Forester, it makes a statement of outdoorsiness, but then it backs that up with actual functionality. To me, it is my marmot jacket of compact SUVs. Like, oh, look at that outdoorsy person. It's actually a very warm and comfy jacket, and it folds down to such a small size too. So practical. If you would like to see more of these kinds of videos, feel free to subscribe at 100,000 subs, we're gonna review a windowless white van. If you'd like to keep up with us between YouTube videos, you can follow us over on Instagram. I'm also over on TikTok. Venture there if you dare. Family, I think we've done a great job driving and reviewing the Subaru Forester. May I collect my fives and a five, and you, come get your high five. Ah.